Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We are now moving to conversations on security. And uh, the question really is, is Nigeria losing territory to Boko Haram? A member of the House of Representatives from Kano State, Haruna Dideri, says Nigeria is losing territories to Boko Haram insurgents. He said this at a sitting of the House Committee on Judiciary. There are many questions to be asked. And of course, uh, the big one is, is this true? How do we also deal with Boko Haram, especially with our stretched security agencies? And is Nigeria's security architecture due for restructuring? We're speaking this morning with a journalist with more than three decades of experience covering security issues across Nigeria. Ben Okizie is joining us on the show. Good morning and thank you for joining us, Mr. Okizie. Morning. Morning. Great to have you on the program this morning. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to start with asking. Uh, there was um, reports that about two weeks ago there was a, an attack on a, a town, uh, Damasak. And, um, um, yeah, Damasak. And, of course, that led to killing of Nigerian citizens. And, you know, there's also reports of Nigerians fleeing into Niger Republic. The Nigerian army, uh, a couple of days after, put out a statement saying that, the, um, that, that Damasak is not currently under Boko Haram's uh, control and it was an attack that was repelled by the army um, and some of all those reports are untrue. But, you know, this, you know, takes us back to, uh, you know, a, lo a lot earlier. In 2013, 2014, there were tales of Boko Haram uh, controlling numerous territories and local governments in, in uh, northern Nigeria. So I, from your you know, analysis and what you've heard, can you give us you know, an idea of what we currently might be dealing with with regards to the Boko Haram uh, sect and how much you know, power they still have in Nigeria? Yeah, thank you very much. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I have been to the Northern Fringes thrice, three times. Uh, when you were talking about Baghdad, I, I slept there in the, um, um, in the house, in the palace of uh, the Emir that was sacked by Boko Haram. And uh, I slept in an open, you know, when you sleep in a, in a room where the roof, there's no roof at all. So these are some of the, the experiences one had as a crime journalists, you know. Um, the thing we've got to understand about Boko Haram is that there's, um, Boko Haram has stopped being a Nigerian uh, issue, so to say. Uh, the only thing they do now is uh, they extend uh, 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 hands of uh, money, full of money to our Nigerian uh, youths who are not uh, employed uh, to join the group, but majorly most of the uh, um, uh, people are from the uh, uh, West African country, also from Libya. You've got to understand when Abubakar uh, Shakao uh, uh, extended uh, hands of fellowship to uh, ISIS International. And ISIS International had to um, uh, sort of create what they call ISIS West Africa. It's ISIS West Africa that we are dealing with. I was speaking on a radio, a, f a foreign radio, and I, I explained uh, uh, to them that uh, most of the uh, insurgents are uh, uh, coming from most of the West African countries where they too are having. Um, uh, issues of uh, unemployment and uh, not until some of these things are handled by uh, state governors I mean state governments uh, we might not be near peace we might not be near peace and uh, 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 just recently the president of Nigeria uh, made a statement that uh, he would want to when the the, uh, the, the president of uh, Niger, uh, Chad, uh, Idris, came visiting, and then there was an agreement that they had this need to collaborate, network with other uh, neighboring countries so that uh, they can have a fortified front uh, against Boko Haram. 
uh, you've got to know that there are three uh, fronts now. We have the way front, uh, which is the one in uh, Cameroon. We have the, um, the, we have the one in, uh, that is facing uh, Chad, and we have the one that is facing Niger Republic. So that's why they created the multinational uh, joint tax force. Uh, good enough that it's uh, being handled by a Nigerian uh, military general. So some of these things are things that uh, those in, or in power are fully aware of. Uh, you've got to also know that the present uh, chief of uh, defense staff, maybe that is, maybe that is why he was uh, uh, picked to be in charge of uh, as the chief of defense staff. That's uh, Major General Loki Rabo. You know, he was in charge of uh, Operation Lafia Adole uh, for a long time. He, with his men, were responsible for the recapturing of uh, 18 local governments that were hitherto in the hands of uh, Boko Haram. So uh, I'm sure they know uh, virtually all the things that are happening. Okay. Uh, just yesterday, the president came back and made a statement that the uh, security chiefs now know the problem uh, of, secure, uh, of security person in Nigeria. So now that they know, we want a quick uh, uh, solution to, to all these things. Okay, so let me come in here. Before 2015, uh, there were cases of suicide bombings. There were cases of uh, buildings, uh, you know, being bombed, explosions and all of that. And then territories being taken by terrorists. And so this administration came in uh, gains were made, no more suicide bombings and all of that. But that doesn't take away from the fact, staring us in the face right now, that there are jailbreaks, there is banditry, kidnappings and all of that. The security situation in Nigeria doesn't look too good. So let me take you back to the very first question. Like the lawmaker said, is Nigeria losing the fight to terrorism? Uh, you know, in war situation, if you've been, uh, if you've been uh, uh, close to it, when there is war, um, there's always the high points and the low points. Uh, most times when the boys, that's the troops, are well gingered, when they are given all that they need for that particular uh, uh, situation, and they have a leader that is uh, always there for them, a leader that uh, gives them all that they need uh, for that uh, operation. You see them in high spirits. It happens even with our local police. You know, when the mobile policemen are uh, given all that they need for uh, an operation, you see them shouting, you know, all those uh, uh, type of shouts, you know, to ginger them up. So there are high points, there are low points, and then uh, maybe the low points are when they discover either some of the things they need are not uh, provided for them, either by the institutions or, the, uh, or by the government. And uh, these are some of the things that uh, can uh, bring down the morale. And of course, when the, any of their leader, uh, you know, is uh, brought down, you remember there was right. uh, um, uh, let, let, uh, uh, a ben that was brought down. Yeah. Ben Okezie, apologies. Uh, I, I, our conversation is, is well. Hopefully, we'll get to talk about the morale of the of the uh, soldiers. Um, what we're trying to establish this morning is: Are we winning the war against insurgency or not? Where are we currently? Do you think that Boko Haram still holds territory? And if they do, what does that mean, um, you know, with regard to our fight against insurgency? Is the lawmaker right to say that uh, there is territory no currently being controlled by Boko Haram and we might be losing the war? The lawmaker, the lawmaker is a politician, first and foremost. He does not have all the uh, necessary... Um, um, understanding of uh, how to judge uh, a war situation. Uh, when if, if, it, if it were to be a security man, 
a military man, I will hit to it. But once it's a politician, uh, the, I don't think I will want to. You know, I, will, I want to until I go there myself. Uh, after listening to the military people making their own submission, then I travel to that place, or because or I get in touch with uh, sources over there to really get the real true situation. Then I will now be able to. Uh, it can just be that uh, in the lawmakers, uh, local government might be just one particular area that was hit. Then he will now use that one to generalize. Nigerians are very good in generalizing. You know, uh, I was listening to you when you were talking about uh, Benue State. You know, the people on ground are give, giving a different figure. But the governor, you know, is giving a, a different figure. So, uh, so people like to gener uh, generalize on some issues like this. So, but uh, as a security writer, I don't uh, go with all those things. I, I go with specifics and with facts before I can make comments on such things. Uh, for the fact that it's from a politician, I will not take it. Uh, well, well, share, uh, share as, with uh, us your own. Complete, uh, this. Yeah, share with us your own specifics and facts um, from what you know. Do we have territory that, that is currently under control of Boko Haram? Is Nigeria winning the war? I don't think so. I don't. The, you see, the thing is that you know uh, uh, bandits, or, or, I mean, uh, terrorists are just like, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, they are just like uh, uh, armed robbers. Arm robbers study situations of security personnel before they strike. I've written a book on that, uh, Dark Clouds. You know, you can go for it. You know, they study the situation of security men. For instance, if in a state like Lagos, let's say there was a change in uh, security uh, uh, personnel, like either the command, uh, the, the command, uh, uh, police commissioner, there is a change. You see that particular uh, space of time, armed robbers always strike. If there is a, a situation where they notice that policemen are not, their morale is very low, armed robbers will always strike. Go, to, go back to the time of Shino Rambo. You will note what, note what I'm, I'm talking about. So uh, if they strike, does not mean that they are in charge. You know, that, that striking can be repelled by our own uh, security uh, men. And you all got to know that uh, many things have been put in place now. Uh, most of the uh, service chiefs, they have uh, given uh, their word that they are going to, you know, beg them. You don't expect them to also sit down lying low and then expect to be rooted out. They also are well armed, just like our own military. It's just the tactics and the strategies that uh, really matters in this, because our own military are trained for war. They are not trained for war. That is the, that's the thing. We, we can you, we, we can sit here and, based on a man's uh, perception of uh, what he thinks, and then we just, uh, because he, I believe that that, that statement was that there's an escalation of it, there's a, a generalization of it, and that we, we should not take it. And we, these things can heat up the system, you know, and it can heat up the system and it can also uh, uh, demoralize the, 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 the boys. And these are type of, the type of statements that would, uh, uh, security uh, agencies don't need. When they do wrong, we, cast, we tell them you are doing wrong. We tell them you are not doing the, uh, uh, the best. When they, 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 their morale was getting low, people talked. And we, 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 we mentioned it that things are not going, going the way it should be. And they picked up and then we saw uh, successes being, you know. So when there is successes, we should uh, applaud and then, you know, uh, um, uh, make them to know that uh, they have a, a duty to perform on behalf of True. the country. Uh, successes should be applauded, right? But there's something you said earlier on, that the uh, terrorists are very well armed. So we've had cases of uh, Nigerian soldiers fleeing in the face of superior firepower, right? And not so long ago, the BBC had said that the NSA said 
past service chiefs had not used monies disbursed for the purchase of arms, even though he denied. He said his comment was taken out of context. Do you think the Nigerian army is well armed to take on terrorists? Uh, you, you, uh, you, I'm sure that uh, I, I, I got a report about uh, uh, some new um, um, armor carrying uh, that there's a, a particular type of uh, uh, um, machine, machinery that uh, machine that uh, uh, military men use in the war front that our own army uh, were able to uh, get recently. So those, some, some of those things we learned, you know, boosted the morale of the boys uh, after the death of that colonel. And uh, uh, we, we, there's no way we can say that our boys are not having enough uh, uh, good, uh, the type of ammo, um, uh, um, uh, firearms that they need. Uh, the thing is that uh, the strategy that we are talking about here, you know, when the, uh, is the way the monkey moves about in the forest, that is the way the hunter, you know, also uh, strategizes to catch the monkey. That's exactly what is happening there. You've got to know there is what we call asymmetrical uh, warfare. It's not the type of uh, face me, I face you type of uh, war that was fought during the Biafran uh, war, war. This is a, a terrorist type of uh, a war that uh, even other countries that are more more uh, uh, sophisticated than Nigeria you know, uh, go through a hellish time, you know, to subdue. Uh, we are just hearing that the, uh, the, uh, the, the president of the uh, uh, U.S. is asking that uh, his men should uh, start withdrawing from uh, uh, Afghanistan. You, you've got to know how many years they've been there fighting that particular war in uh, Afghanistan. So uh, it's, it's not something that uh, it does... They, 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 the terrorists, they are... They are, they are internationally linked, and whatever they need, they can easily request and uh, get it. That is the, that is just the, uh, to block all those uh, sources of uh, supply. If we're able to block all those sources, that is where all the, uh, the synergy, the networking of all the uh, governments of uh, the West, West African countries uh, is needed so that they can uh, do a better job. Uh, thank God uh, Idris was a former military uh, uh, general, uh, that's the president of, uh, um, of Chad, and then our own president is also a former military general. So when they put their heads together, I'm sure uh, many things will, will, will happen. We, we pray that uh, now that the president is back, that you know he must have watched things from from the uh, from the uh, sideline. Okay, Mr. Uh, Kizzi, while he's resting. So you talked about change of tactics and all of that. Is there a possibility that these terrorists have changed tactics and now, you know, acting as bandits, kidnappers, herders? Is there a possibility? And if that's the case, do you think this is now overwhelming uh, security agents? I don't. Uh, 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 the issue of banditry. Uh, I have said that many times. Uh, these are the fleeing, fleeing uh, Boko Haram uh, uh, terrorist gangs that will have been defeated. Uh, they have to uh, find a way to escape more onslaught on their lives. So when they move in in that land, into Nigeria uh, space. Uh, what they now do, they, you know, when they flee, they are they flee with their firearm. Nobody checks their whether they they, they uh, drop their firearm or not. Just not like uh, our own Nigeria. If a soldier leaves, you know, he has to go and report and re keep his firearm. But the bandits, when they flee from the war zone, either because they are defeated, when they come in 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 inward, what they do now is that they now. Uh, extend their hands of fellowship to other uh, criminals in the internal space. And then when they meet with them, that is where you see all this uh, banditry that is already happening because some of the bandits that uh, uh, we know that they are 
the, some of the governors that have uh, confessed that uh, when they were talking with the bandits, they said they are they are from the state. They know where they, they live, which means they are not from outside. So most times when they come like that, when they join hands together like that, they also uh, have uh, other criminals from outside the country who flood into the country to come. Uh, we, we, were, we, reliably, uh, recite, we reliably recite that uh, during, the, uh, during the election, many of them came in and then uh, there were reports that they came in from the Northern Sphere, Niger and Otto, and disguised like Aosas and the Fulanis to come and vote and all those things. And then those are some of the, many of them still stay here and some of them don't have anything to do. They are criminals. So when they see this type of opening, they, they join hands together and then that's where you see the escalation of uh, criminality amongst them. But it is now left our own security agencies to uh, study the situation and know how to uh, get at them and re-strategize to, because you ha they cannot use the same system to fight them. You must continuously be changing your, your tactics and strategies. Well, uh, we've been re-strategizing for about a decade now. We've also had um, different tactics. We've had different um, chief of defense staff, chief of army staff. We've had, you know, a lot of all those changes. <laughs> um, you know, we're still having conversations. I, 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 IRA, IRA, terrorism, how many decades? For a long time. Um, uh, you go to uh, Southern uh, Africa, um, uh, Somalia and Co., you know, how many years? Uh, you go to uh, 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 Indonesia, how many years? Even well, it's India, not, we're, up we're, to we're, now, we're, they we're, still have all those things. Hmm. But the thing is that it's just for us to be more uh, strategically uh, positioned to be able to know how to uh, handle these things. It's, it's and not then the, the good terrorism. Thing that we have, all the we have okay somebody here. who is uh, on top of the... Yeah, it's, it's not a we have, terrorism uh, Olympics the, that we're doing here. We're not, we're not necessarily trying to be... Who, hold on, Mr. Okay, we're not trying to, you know, match with other countries, you know, because they've done it for 12, 15, 20 years. Doesn't mean that Nigeria should also live in, you know, the same situation security-wise for 15, 20 years. The fact that the United States went into Afghanistan in 2001 and we're still talking about them pulling out now doesn't mean that Nigeria should do the same. Um, we've had investments in our security architecture. Billions of naira has been put in there. We've had new strategies. We've had um, new um, people taking over those positions. Um, but we are yet to see... You know, an actual end to the war against insurgency. You've talking about, you've spoken rather about the places where we, there are loopholes. How do these people get weapons? How are they funded? Uh, you also mentioned that they are coming in from other countries, according to your analysis, from Libya. You mentioned uh, from Chad, from Niger, from Cameroon. There's all those fronts that you've mentioned. Um, but we've had about a decade to deal with this issue. We've had a decade of these conversations. In what ways have we been successful? Where are we currently? Do Nigerians, you know, feel safer in any part of the country, um, especially in northern Nigeria? The lawmakers saying that people are running, you know, away from Damascus and fleeing to other countries. We also talked about Ogun State not long ago, that there's persons who had to flee, you know, across the border uh, because of security challenges also. Haven't we had enough time to deal with this situation? Haven't we had enough time to at least find out the sponsors of these terrorist groups? Haven't had, well, we had enough time to at least find out where these weapons are coming from and block some of all those entry routes through which these terrorists get their weapons? Haven't we? The buck stops at the table of the president. He's the commander-in-chief of the armed forces and he's the president. Now... Thank God he's uh, uh, a, a former military general who have also uh, tested war. Um, uh, uh, there's, there's no, no two ways to all this. It's just for them in those offices uh, to do the right thing. Many security uh, 
uh, personalities, uh, uh, strategic uh, explanations that uh, they know that uh, this have been said, and they've given us their word now. They've changed the service chiefs. The service chiefs have given us their, their word that they are going to um, end this thing. Uh, they've changed the uh, police uh, chief also. He has given, he has re-strategized this morning. Uh, he has uh, uh, changed some of the uh, uh, archaic systems that uh, the former IG was using. He, he was in the, in the system. And now he has studied everything he knew. He knows that uh, uh, there are some areas that were, uh, are not. But look, let me tell you, the issue of banditry is not meant for uh, this military. Banditry is an internal security issue. And it should be handled by the police completely. We have analyzed this thing and said that police has all that it takes to flush out banditry. And thank God the IG, the present IG, has I found this as, as when he was talking with uh, all the AIGs yesterday. He has affirmed it that banditry is their own responsibility and that he is giving Nigerians that uh, 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 word that he is going to flush them out. So uh, the, the thing is talking and then backing it up with uh, action. So if these things are joined together, Nigeria should be hope that we should not feel discomforted that uh, things are happening like this. Yes, things are happening, but nonetheless, these leaders, uh, Irabo was at the war front before, uh, uh, the IG uh, has been in this system, both of them has given Nigerians that uh, hope, and, uh, we, and with the president providing all that they need, uh, we hope that uh, uh, Nigeria should uh, give a sign of a sign of relief very soon what because I, I trust I trust in their judgment. I have been there. I have worked in the first headquarters. I know. Uh, ben, I know ben, the okay, president yeah. IG. I have been to the war front. I know the for, former uh, chief of army staff. They are people who have done things that uh, they have shown. Uh, ben, 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 okay, I mean uh, results. So yeah. we should give them that that uh, opportunity again. I believe that, you know, the president has also seen that, you know, these persons are expectedly capable. Um, they are trained well enough. They have uh, years and years of experience in dealing with war situations, undoubtedly. Um, but results are what Nigerians need to see. And when we're talking results, regardless of whether they're called bandits yes. or headsmen or terrorists or Boko Haram or ISWAP, it is still at the expense of Nigerian lives and property. And regardless of whatever name you give them, there is a security agency that is set up to address these issues. Um, what do you think we lack, um, you know, and we've lacked for so long, that might be making it difficult for us to address security challenges? I, I started, I write in the Sun newspaper every Thursday where I analyze security issues. And many years ago, I came up with the uh, issue and I said what Nigeria needs is set, starting what I call what is there already known state police. We must have a state police. Ashiwaji Tunumbu by bought into it and he has he, he he has studied it and he knows that is the right thing to do. Uh, former President Ibrahim Babangida bought into it and he knew that that is the right thing to do. Uh, the present vice president, uh, 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 the pres present vice president has bought into it, and he knows that that is the right thing to do. Now we are waiting for the government uh, of uh, Buari to uh, make sure that these things... All right, we're struggling with um, network with Ben Okezir. I think we're going to have to wrap it up here. Um, yeah, sure. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Okezie. He's a security journalist uh, of many, many years. Uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us uh, this morning on The Breakfast. We're sorry we are unable to bring you a conversation on inflation and the uh, high cost of food um, um, across Nigeria. Uh, we hope that we can reschedule that for sometime over the weekend or Monday. But uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into something a little lighthearted. Wally Scott will be joining us. Stay with us. <laughs>